Mice Chat Podcast is a member of the Mice Chat Podcast Network. MicePod.com Now get ready for the happiest place in cyberspace. This is a MiceChat.com production. I think that's tragic. Mike's Chat brings a different look at Disney and, and the theme, theme park industry. industry. Get ready for the happiest pie pie podcast in cyberspace. Space. Mice Chat.com podcast. podcast. Let's chat. My Chat Podcast. We're back for another episode. Uh, a little bit different, huh, Dusty Sage? Doug Barnes, how are you doing? So nice to be I, back with you. It is. Uh, your, your Skype line sounds really good right now, I gotta tell I you. I was just gonna say the same. Your Skype line wow. sounds really good. I have a great Skype line. Well, you know where our Skype line is today? Where is it, sir? We are live on location at the Disneyland Resort, the happiest place on Earth. Not just the resort, we're actually at Disneyland, inside the park right now. I don't know how we're getting away with this. I don't either. But uh, we're here underneath the uh, Tarzan Treehouse right now, the former home of the Swiss people. <laughs> the Swiss people. That's how I've always called it, the Swiss people tree or whatever it is. Yeah, the Swiss family Robinson, and they were kicked out by giant inflatable tigers. Are they inflatable? I didn't know that. They look, they're, hard, they're a solid plastic they tiger. They are solid plastic. I don't know what species that is, but yeah. it's a very durable... I, it sound, it look, they look like they're budgeted tigers, maybe. Or, they, oh, leopards. <laughs> that's, that, uh, somebody over my shoulder, it's, my little conscience came out and just said it. But yeah. That's right. And they're leopards. A, Rosie O'Donnell is up there. Uh, <laughs> she is. She's a, she's a giant gorilla, appropriately and, enough. And she's inflatable. She, you know, I wouldn't doubt that. <laughs> Uh, but we have quite the show today. We're going to wander the park and uh, talk about various things. So this will be a mindless episode that I think folks will really enjoy. Yeah, would they love mindlessness? <laughs> I can't say that. You know what else is uh, of questionable quality that's with us today? <laughs> I don't know where this is going. Where, where is this going? <laughs> well, we have, we have my friend David Ye with us. David Ye. David, how are you? Hey, Dusty Sage, how are you? <laughs> I'm Hey, really, Doug. I'm good. You know, people don't really. How's Doug. it going, David? <laughs> I'm pretty unquestionable right now. <laughs> I gotta admit. Oh, see, I was going the other way on that. Uh, I, I was pretty sure you were the questionable element. Uh, oh yes, yes. I am the variable. Uh, Dusty's throwing me into a special Disney magic right now. Always. Yeah. Uh, David is an old friend of ours. He's my chat moderator. He's an expert on Disney merchandise. He's in the. Uh, movie industry. He's a fascinating guy, and I think we're going to like the comments that he has to share about all things Disneyland today. Sure. All right. That's awesome. Shall, shall, we, uh, <laughs> shall we wander? Yeah, let's wander. Well, I see Haunted Mansion up ahead. Why don't we head that way? All right, let's go. Off we go. Man, we've been wandering for quite a while. It is a long, long walk across New Orleans Square. Hey, look, there's Colby Radigan. He's a longtime Ice Chat reader. Hey, Colby, Colby. Hey, guys, how's it going? Well, it's good. What are you up to, Colby? Nothing much, just at Disneyland and working on my newest model right now. What, what model are you working on? Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem at Universal Studios Hollywood. That's really cool. Uh, folks on the, the line might not realize, Colby is a young reader of my chat, and as long as we've known him, he's been building models of his favorite theme park rides, and he's gotten pretty well known. In fact, I understand that because of the model that you took to one of the my chat events, Garner Holt offered you a tour of his his facility. Yeah, that was an amazing tour we got with Garner Holt and Bill Butler, and everything with theme parks in the future is going to be incredible right now. Can you tell us any secrets? Nope, I'm under lock and key. <laughs> oh my goodness. But what was it like going out there? It was amazing. It's the magic shop out there, like a kid in a candy store. It's amazing to see all the animatronics being made and all the set pieces for the mine ride right now. Wow, the mine ride at Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah. They have all this stuff out there at the shop. Yeah. That would make sense. Doug, you've been out there. Yeah, I just went out there uh, just a few days ago. Checked yeah. it out. And uh, yeah, there's plenty of mine train stuff going on there. It looks really, really cool. 
Uh, and uh, you know that there's over 120 characters that they're putting into the new mine, mine ride. Oh my gosh, I knew it was going to be a lot like yeah. the log ride, but that's just tremendous. Yeah, it's huge. It's twice as many figures that they're putting in. And yeah, it's really busy over there, isn't it, Colby? Yeah, they're doing so much. I don't know how they're handling all of it right now. Yeah, well, they just keep all their junk in there. I mean, it is, it, it, there's so much stuff going on yeah. in there that, you know, they just they tend to just work around it. They just keep on putting more stuff, more stuff, but they, they find space. They find a way to do it. That's what makes them so wonderful. They're able to do so much at one time. Well, you know, just yesterday, the, the day before we were recording this podcast, uh, Garner Holt won the uh, TIA Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, and he's a young man. He's only, I think, 53 or 54 years yeah. old. So it makes him the youngest recipient of that award. And when you go out there to the shop, you can really tell why. I mean, yeah. he's built an empire for oh, himself. Oh, he has. And uh, Garner actually does almost all of Disney's animatronics. So, you know, used to be Disney would build their own animatronics. And now Garner is just so proficient at it, so professional, builds such incredible figures that... It was less expensive and just as good or better quality for Disney to outsource it all to Garner. How about that? He's What he's done is just amazing, how he's wanted to work for Disney, and then Disney doesn't hire him. And now he has his own factory and company, and yeah, he does turn out better than Disney now. And he, he was about your age, I think, when he first started getting yeah. uh, going in the theme park business. He started building haunted attractions in local malls. Yeah. And here you are about the same age and you're building models and a lot of your models are really detailed, Colby. It's amazing Thank stuff. You. So where where are we going to see you in 10 years? Well, I'd like to go to Walt Disney Imagineering right now, but we'll see where the future takes me. Could be anywhere right now, Universal or Gardner Hall. There's a lot of incredible work being done by all sorts of theme parks and uh, we know that you're going to be somewhere big, Colby. So... You know, remember us I when will. you're big and huge <laughs> and we're still doing this podcast because we'd like to see more of you. <laughs> so good luck, Colby. Good to see you. What, what ride are you off to do now? Big Thunder. Big Thunder. Have you been on it yet? Yeah, it's amazing. What did you think of the, the, big, the big surprise? I hope they can keep it up and make it work every time. Well, I got news for you. It only works about half the time. So, <laughs> for, for those of you on the line, Big Thunder has a spectacular new uh, finale that we won't give too much away on, but it's an explosive finish to the ride that is always needed, and it only works about half the time. So hopefully, so good luck. Yeah, hopefully you'll all be able to see it out there. And if not, I'm sure that Doug will probably be having some sort of a live ride through or something. I mean, it's what you do for a living. Uh, yeah, sure. I can live ride through with Doug. Yeah. Live Going ride. cheap. That's, that's my that's my new show I'm making. Live ride throughs with Doug. That's David. Have you been on the the new Thunder Mountain? Yeah, I've been on it twice, and it's pretty awesome because it was something I wasn't expecting, and you know I I was lucky enough to see it work both times, so it was great. Yeah, we went for a preview, and the the night we went, it worked over and over again. We just kept riding over and over. There was no one else in line. It was like twenty people, and. Uh, we just kept riding it. Every single time, it surprised me just how perfect this was. A lot of technology in there that you wouldn't expect to find. The very next morning, we rode, and it didn't work once. So, I mean, there's other stuff in there, and it's still a good ending. But without the big surprise that I can't tell you all, that is so amazing that it's just killing me that I can't tell you. So maybe I can tell No, I can't tell them. No, don't, don't tell them. But it's not a Yeti. It's not a Yeti. It might be a Yeti. It's not a Yeti. Oh, darn, I was trying to fake them it, out. It would make sense if it was the Yeti that it wouldn't work. <laughs> That's another story. That's not in this park. No, it's not. <laughs> this is a full day park, though. This is a full day park. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Colby. It was nice to see you. Nice seeing you, Have fun too. in the park. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> nice running into Colby. He's a really good kid. Oh, yeah, he's a great kid. You know, he's been a supporter of our show for so long, so it's great to actually see him here and be able to get his story. You know, and he's got all the luck in the world. He goes to the Mice Chet event, he meets Garner, gets invited to go out there for a tour. He gets back. He also got invited to our tour at Walt Disney Imagineering. Oh, my God. Uh, he's on his way. He's oh, going to yeah, be another totally. Garner for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And he's talking about Walt Disney Imagineering or, or Universal Creative. Whatever it is, you can get into something. There's so many different uh, avenues 
said he can go to get into this industry. Oh, look, there's the uh, Columbia. Why don't we? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, why don't we I, run? You know, by I've and never go there. been on the Columbia. Really? Yeah, I've never well, been. Let's on do it. it. It's right. just right here, and all then right. we'll go over to the mansion afterwards. It sounds good. Let's, let's do, do that. it. Yeah. Sorry. I love this. This, this is, is awesome. Great ride. This is fantastic. Like I said, I've been on uh, Mark Twain. I've never had the chance to ride to Columbia. This is a, like a great opportunity for me. Have you been on this ship before, David? Oh, yeah. I do this uh, often enough. And what I like about Mark Twain and the Columbia is that it's, it's almost like what serves to me is the, what the people mover did in Tomorrowland back in the day. And it's just like this relaxing voyage that you can just go around in a circle and see Frontierland, New Orleans Square, and Critter Country from above. Or, or down below if you're on the Mark Twain. And I think it's just, you know, it's one of those gems that that we really need in this park. Yeah, a good fun for the whole family. Grandma can ride and the kids, and it's really neat. But you were just asking me a question about this ship. Yeah. How does the ship move without sails? Well, I have a theory. I think it's being pushed by a pack of magical ducks. Magical ducks. It's just a theory. It makes sense. I actually believe in that. Would you I say think. that these ducks are mighty? <laughs> oh, the oh. mighty. Oh, yuck, 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 yuck. Yeah. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> Oh, no, it is a great view. So up ahead on our left is the Haunted Mansion, and just past that is Splash Mountain. We're passing the stage uh, for Fantasmic, the old shack. And behind it is something that really bothers me a lot. You see the treehouse up there just behind the shack? Yeah, I do see that. So nobody is in that treehouse. They have blocked it off. And for many, many, many months now, they've just had barricades around it. They're not doing any work on it. It's just blocked off. And what I want to know, is this just another thing Disney Legal has decided that modern Americans can't handle? Or... They have structural problems with it. I, I can imagine that maybe there's something structurally going on because, I mean, we are climbing this big old tree that's right off of the shore over here, yeah. known as Tarzan. So, uh, so uh, <laughs> did you just say Tarzan? Tarzan. <laughs> just making sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, how, that's how I call it. Everybody says Tarzan. I say Tarzan. I'd like to see them fix something like that. It's, it's a classic part of Tom Sawyer Island. You know, Tom and Huck playing in the treehouse. It's, it's and how long has it been since the fort has closed that we still aren't oh, able to go in? Not just closed, but torn down, and then they just built walls, and they kind of vaguely look like a oh, fort, but me. that's just to hide all the stuff for Fantasmic. Okay. And beginning our journey into the great American wilderness. Our vessel for this voyage is the proud sailing ship Columbia. The first Have you ever uh, been downstairs here, David? I've been downstairs, and uh, it's really cool because it, you know, it's kind of like a little museum attraction in itself. And even though it's not totally accurate, it's really cool. For it, it's almost was as cool as the Swiss Family Treehouse back in the day. You see how different people lived, other than you. You know, we live in houses and apartments here, and, and living in a treehouse, living in a boat, it's a very different thing that we don't see very often. And I thought, Doug, you've never been on this ship. So never been on. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm always uh, interested in seeing that uh, Disney tradition happening here. So let's go down into the bowers of the ship. I feel like I can hit my head on this thing. So watch your head here, Doug, because yeah. it's tight spaces. Oh, I love this. There's a pot of stew here with a fish head with fish an eyeball. Head. That is awesome. <laughs> it's great. Oh, and these are it's not, the... It's not real, thank God. The quarters. This is where the cook... Cook and carpenter. Yeah, they stay there. No. That little tiny shack. Yeah. There's a lot of fruits and vegetables here. Oh, I don't know if dry it's... Dry stores. And those last for a really long time. Keep you from getting scurvy. <laughs> they need their vitamin C. <laughs> <laughs> these quarters here do not look like they're uh, fun for a long ocean voyage. No, in fact, this has to be the most uncomfortable looking sleeping quarters I've ever seen in my life. Kind of a little bit like the, the new Mice Jet Mansion that we're moving to. <laughs> oh, look, here's some uh, mice shutters. Hello. Hey. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Good. Very well, thank you. How are you? We're good. You enjoying the Columbia? Of course, we love to be pirates. You, uh, you're, are you pretending? <laughs> I am. It's always good to pretend to be a pirate. And your names? Julie. And Brian. Well, good to see you guys. So what are you doing at Disneyland today? 
just, just hanging out. Hanging out for a little while, having lunch, enjoying a couple rides. Now, this is what pass holders do, folks. They come in <laughs> midday, they have lunch, they ride a ride or two, and they leave. They Don't get be lunch. all jealous. Calm down. It's all right. No, it's, it's a good life. It is it a good is life. life. And uh, you don't have to pay the $130 for a one-day park hopper. Correct. It's your annual pass holders, and you come whenever you want. How often do you come to the park? About once a week on average. Wow. Once every couple of weeks, yeah. That's that's a lot. A lot. What do your what do your friends outside of Disney think about that? They think it's a little crazy. And do you think it is? No. I disagree. It's fun. It's our social setting. We get together here with other mice chatters and have a great time. Yeah, I'm not one to judge. Uh, <laughs> we've been doing the mice chat noon meet every Sunday for oh probably about 16 years or so, a long time, on time. And that's where I've met these guys and so many thousands of other people. So it's a yeah. lot of fun running into you. Good to see you. And you're going to be on the Mice Chat podcast. Is that okay? That's fine. That's fine with me? All okay, right. that's legal consent. <laughs> it is legal consent. Right I am there. the official attorney of Mice Chat. I oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Right, if you need a lawyer. something away? No. Let us okay. know. We're good. We've got one right here in the mic. Enjoy your time. Good have a good podcast. Good yeah. fun of the park. You know, I have to say, this is really, really interesting because I never thought that this was down here this whole time. I never even thought about seeing something like this. But this is something that's really cool. And it feels extremely classic to me, like something that Disney, uh, you know, what used to be. You know, they used to have stuff like this where you were able to just walk in environments and see something that, you know, is not normal to you every day. It's uh, like a museum almost, and uh, you can almost feel Walt's presence. Yes. You know, I want it accurate. I, you know, it has to be small enough to fit in the park, but it has to be as accurate as possible yeah. to what people would have experienced crossing the seven seas back in the day. Yeah. And you get that feeling in here. It's pretty Absolutely. Cool. I mean, I'm really glad you guys suggested this because... Uh, this is uh, something I definitely want to take my boys back to experience and see because I think that they would really get a kick out of this. And it's it's great that it's not tied to a movie or anything else. This is just just feeds your imagination. Right, right? Yeah, there's no IP here. This is just great, you know, Disney Disney work at its best. And you're you know, again, we're on the rivers of America as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Speaking of which, let's go back up and see if uh, the Indians are out in Indian country. Uh, <laughs> I see. Here we are in the Indian village. This is one of my favorite animatronics in the park, the village chief there. And he's actually telling a story to the to the kids. Yeah. And look at how awesome that animatronic is just out in the open. You know, it's out in the open. It's far away from everybody. But, yeah, it seems to be working with such great detail. Well, crew, Fluidity. We yeah. Set and sail for home. Oh, no, already? The flying jib. I'm to go Brace home, for a starboard tech. Who can help her stand by the pots? Quentin. Shipmates, if you haven't done so, it is a good time to visit the crew's quarters below decks to see how sailors of the 1790s lived and worked while on the high seas. We're passing uh, when we enter a new animatronic they put in. It's the eagle. Oh, my God. The eagle up there by the nest. I would have never even looked up there. They did that a couple of years ago when they added the pirates to Tom Sawyer's Island. And you can, from one of the spy glasses on the island, see that eagle and the nest and there's even some chicks in the nest and they also move oh wow yeah yeah oh that's fantastic but what's missing they used to have a bear in the woods and he was leaning against a tree and he would scratch his back on the tree up yeah. and down and he's gone hmm. maybe he's just hibernating right now yeah we're passing the old trestle tracks right now the mine train through nature's wonderland yeah i would not want to ride that Mine no. train. It looks like it has some severe damage it, to it. It definitely does, but those are the real tracks. And for a long, long time, they even had one of the old trains out here as a prop, but it's been removed. So, okay, yeah. So the, the space is right over here. Not much. You look through the tunnel right there, it's the Big Thunder Trail. So we're really, there's a little berm here, and we're just on the other side of Big Thunder Trail. Nice. Just big enough to put in a Mad Mouse right there, or maybe a drop ride. Yeah. <laughs> Someday, when Six Flags takes over, all of this will be a, it'll be a fifteen or sixteen story drop tower. That's, that's right. I, yeah, I heard that uh, Six Flags is financially doing a lot better right now. <laughs> yeah, they, they've been wanting to take over Disney for a long time. You know? yeah, of course, this, this would be the April Fools' episode if we had thought to do one. Yeah, no kidding. Now look right here where we are. We've got a canoe behind us. 
we're on a ship. In front of us is the Mark Twain. There are ducks, you know, there's live, a, there's live kids birds walking everywhere. walking through Tom Sawyer Island right over All here. All this activity. And this is something theme parks would never think to build today. Yeah. There, there are no thrill rides at all in this area. Oh, um, sorry about that, folks. It, We've run into it's a just bit built of for families. Mark Twain is holding us up right now. But it's, I see it backing up, so they're just loosening from their mooring, and they'll be on their way and so will we. But I love seeing the canoes go by. One of my other favorite things to spy on the river, early in the season every year, you see a bunch of canoe boys and girls, and you know, they're just average young kids who've gotten a job at Disneyland. Yeah. By the end of summer, these these are all the buffest looking cast members you've ever seen in your life because they're rowing all day long. I mean this is this is like coming into work at eight o'clock in the morning and and working out all day yeah. at a gym. Dusty Sage, so right now the cheering you just heard, that was for a canoe that is now passing us up. And uh, it's because the Columbia is waiting for the Mark Twain to, to leave its port. So, Look at those people on the boat. Some just, are really into it, and they're really paddling, and some just kind of dragging their paddles. They're not. Look, that one guy, not he hasn't put his paddle in once. <laughs> I love it. Now, uh, Dusty Sage, you've been to Walt Disney World several times. What yep. kind of activity do you see on their rivers? They used to have all the same activities, uh, but nowadays they really don't have much of anything going on on the river except their uh, steamship, and I can't remember the name of it. It's not called the Mark Twain. Is it called the Liberty, Square? Liberty Bell? Liberty Bell. Something Steam like that, and uh, that's the only ship on the river. So they, they no longer have their keel bo- boats, of course, neither do we. And I don't believe they use their canoes anymore either. Right. Um, so they do still have the rafts to Tom Sawyer's Island. They do have the rafts to Tom Sawyer Island. And they've got another, another canoe. Another canoe. They're coming by. <laughs> We're waving, of course, down to the people in the canoes. And if they wave back, they'll lose their paddles. So it's always worth waving. You never yeah. know. <laughs> you might <laughs> see something special. The they just ran into that family of ducks. And there's one, two, three, four, five little tiny baby ducklings. Little itty-bitty tiny baby ducklings. Yep. So cute. Of course, David's got his camera out to take pictures. David's an amazing, amazing photographer. And he's got a camera with him that looks like a telescope. Yeah. <laughs> So another couple of my shatters we just ran into here. How are you doing? This is Good. Chris. How are you? And Ron. Yes. How are you guys? I'm great. Excellent. We're running into all kinds of people we know on the ship today. Did you enjoy your little trip around the river? We did. We did. It was very nice. All the Indians. So even though this isn't a thrill ride, you still like doing this kind of stuff? Well, especially on a day like today, the sun is out. It's really nice. It's relaxing. It kind of just gives you a chance to uh, sit down, watch everything else. We were just talking about how these kinds of attractions don't get built anymore. Uh, Think, uh, when was the last time a theme park built an experience like this? Just a slow-moving boat ride around a giant river. Can you think of any? Not offhand, no. No. It's a a product of its time, but I think these are the kinds of experiences that make Disneyland really different. Yeah, it's something that will never change. I'll definitely enjoy coming back on this boat route and on the Columbia quite often. I like the other ship a little better, the Mark Twain, uh, but only because I I don't like to necessarily always be out in the sun and you can get on one of the lower decks there and still enjoy the river. But this ship is so cool. It is kind of a bit like being on a pirate ship. Yeah. And later in the evening, they do Fantasmic, and this is a major prop in the show. So we're riding on it during the day as an attraction, and at night, it's in a stage show. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. You're, you're, you're totally right. I also like the fact I never. this is the first time I've been uh, downstairs, and I didn't notice that there was all these neat little artifacts. And Yeah, it's cool, you know, isn't it? Yeah, it's different. I wish you could see out, but, um, but yeah, no, it's really neat. In the very back, if you go to the very back downstairs, there is a window, and you can see out. And we looked out and saw that the Indian village was coming, and so we <laughs> hightailed it back upstairs to see what the Indian chief was, was saying today. It was nice running into you guys. Oh, it was you too. So where are you off to after this? <sighs> I, I mean, I want to catch the Pixar parade. Pixar? Yeah. Cars Land. Yes. Cars Land. Cars Land. So Cars you're Land. headed over to California Adventure? Most yes. likely. Well, Can't it's good get seeing you guys. Have fun. Thank you. Thank good you. To see you too. Bye, Dusty getting off the ship right now and um, we're looking over in New Orleans Square and you can see the tops of the buildings in New Orleans Square have 
some plastic blowing around, giant white sheets of plastic. Oh, those aren't supposed to be up there? No. Oh, okay. That is expansion for Club 33. So they are uh, doing some major work in the old part of the club where the trophy room used to be. For those who have been there, it was a kind of a private room off to the side where you could have special events. And when it was very busy, they would do some seating in there. But that is room that the is one that has, like, the birds and Yeah, okay. all the stuffed animals. Yeah. Not my favorite room in Club 33. And that is being turned into a kitchen. And then the old main dining room is remaining with some uh, cosmetic changes. And then in the building next door, the one that uh, Cafe Orleans, which is a French market or Cafe Orleans? It's right by the well, train station Cafe there. Cafe Orleans behind it. I believe that's French market. French market over there. Upstairs at French Market, that entire building is going to become a jazz club. And it's really not going to be a jazz club. It's just themed in that style. It's just going to be a lounge. Yeah. So Club 33 members can go and get a drink in the park during the day. And they'll have a full menu, and it'll be really, really cool. But it's kind of created some uh, construction problems in New Orleans Square, which has very, very tight spaces anyway. So you yeah, see a lot of walls in there and things. And on a busy day like today, and it is very busy, folks, um, all these construction walls don't make things easy. They don't, but, you know, I, I think that expansion of uh, Club 33 is so necessary because capacity has always been an issue for Club 33. Yeah, I think, you know, personally, I'm uh, excited about it. I think it'd be neat. Hopefully somebody will take me in there someday and I'll get to see what it looks like. Yeah, of course. But I think for a lot of folks, uh, they don't understand. You know, it's a very exclusive experience and the park is supposed to be for every man and they don't understand this whole club 33 thing you know they can't get up there so what's the big deal and i see that point of view also david you look like you just found out about club 33 right now <laughs> no actually i'm one of the very few fortunate people that have gone, oh, gone a few times but he wasn't even uh, playing with me on that one he's like no i don't i don't lie <laughs> I, I do have a question maybe dusty sage do you i'm not sure if you heard or know this answer but uh, do you know is the lounge the jazz club is that going to be f- kind of similar to Club 1901 that you could just go in and any time you feel like it? Yeah, I think that's the idea. Uh, it, it'll be a little swankier looking than, than the 1901 lounge that they built at California Adventure. But club members, as I understand it, won't need reservations to go in and can go whenever they want as long as there's room. And uh, I don't know anything really else about it except it kind of has a New Orleans jazz theme, Princess maybe not the unlike Frog. Princess and the Frog, exactly. And I think there may be some little nods to Princess and the Frog in there. It'd be silly for there not to be. Uh, One cool thing we heard about is they have a state-of-the-art player piano in there that has actually got the ability to record things. So if they had uh, Richard Sherman come in and play the piano, it would record it exactly as he played it. Not just the notes, but the actual intonation and everything. And they could play that back anytime they wanted. So it's really That's That's something. That's pretty legendary right there. Yeah. So I can't wait to, to see that so out there in mice chat land if you have a hookup for club 33 be sure to offer doug and david and i a little taste of the new club when it opens yeah because david yeah yeah you need to go there uh, it's been it's been years so yeah, yeah. Uh, david said he's paying for <laughs> drinks drinks all around <laughs> scotch mist <laughs> to the New Orleans Square Frontierland train station. It started out as kind of like a New Orleans accent and then it ended up just as dusty. Well, I don't know that I was actually trying to do an accent, but I can't help myself when I'm at Disneyland. (laughs) You know, you're totally immersed in the environment and uh, where we are right now, we're literally at the exit of the train station and across from it is some of the construction for New Orleans Square. And there's something really cool. They have these giant scrims up around the building where the construction is, but they have printed what the building looks like on those scrims. So when you're looking at the balcony there, it almost looks like the balcony is really there. Yeah, it's a great visual effect. The only way that I can really tell is because of the wind. Yeah, Yeah. when the wind came through, you could see it move a little bit. I didn't notice that. Yeah, right? Isn't that nuts? 
I love these little touches, and that's an expensive thing to do, very expensive. Yeah. But it's a long-term construction project, so it's worth it to Disney to do. But it's those little things that show they really do care yeah, about the guests. Yeah, they do guess. care. Yeah, so uh, they ha- here's the thing. You always have to expand, right? Disney said himself. Walt Disney said that this is, will never, it's never going to be finished. It's always going to continue to grow, and you have to continue to change things. But the best way to do it is to make people think that the magic is still there, that, that nothing has changed, even though it's changing right in front of your eyes. This is a great magic trick, really. Oh, it's wonderful. And uh, I wonder what resolution that picture had to have been for them to blow it up that, that size. Big. It's literally the size of the second half of the building. You know what I actually think? Because lately in this, uh, this uh, themed entertainment world now, what's happening is this, all this projection mapping. You know, they have these computers that come through and map these buildings out. Then they create the projections. So they can actually be doing that with uh, artistic canvas as well. I'm sure that if you walk up closer to that scrim, the detail will start to kind of disappear before your very eyes. A little bit, but it's not bad. When they were redoing the train station, they had the scrims up on it. A lot of people take photos in front of the giant Mickey floral at the front of the park. And it was good enough quality. When you took a picture at the Mickey floral... You couldn't tell that the train station was behind a tarp. The image on it was so good. And when you were on the train, you were next to the tarp, and it looked real even there. It was pretty cool. They took it at the time um, of Halloween because there were pumpkins. You could look through the windows and see the pumpkins on Main Street. And it wasn't during Halloween time at the time it was up. But you, but that's how clear it was. You could see through the windows and onto Main Street. That was pretty cool. Here, the train pulling up. Yep. Which one is this one? It is the Ward Kimball. That's a good train. Uh, I never Ward noticed Kimball. the Jiminy Cricket on the front. Now that that makes sense if it's the Ward Kimball. Yep, that's right. Most of Disneyland's cars face towards the inside of the park, so long benches that face in. But they do have cars that face forward, which is what all the early trains. They were yeah. cattle cars early on, where you'd actually stand in a cattle car. And... <laughs> Those you stood the last, whole time? Those didn't last very long. Yeah, exactly. Because no one wants to think of themselves as cattle. Uh, yeah. And then they had the forward-facing trains, which I think they call the excursion cars. Um, but there's not as much to see forward, and there's nothing to see to your left for most of the journey. So they built these new cars um, that face inward. Yeah. And in Florida, I think all the trains still face forward. Yeah, they do. All of them do. And there's nothing to see on Florida anyway. <laughs> they, there, there's very little to see around there. They're train ride, whereas Disneyland, there's a lot to see. Yeah. This is something I love about Disneyland: live music everywhere, Main Street, New Orleans Square. There are bands playing. It's a live band playing at, uh, at a restaurant just out in the public area near the train station. This is so cool. And the only place in the park to get mint juleps. Yeah, that's right. Mint juleps are served right outside here. Do you drink that stuff? Occasionally. It's a little sweet. It tastes like mouthwash yeah. to me. It's very sweet mouthwash. That's mint. That's why it does. I don't drink them. Because I just don't need to. I, I'm not a mint guy anyway, so. I think a, a mint julep is supposed to have booze in it. Yeah, but this is uh, Disneyland. There's no such thing as booze, unless no. you're at Club 33, which we don't know much about. No, we're not allowed to talk about that. Okay. Walking up towards one of my favorite spots in the park. It's a little hidden oh, yeah. alcove. Uh, we're just behind the, I think they call it the Harbor Galley here, across from the Haunted Mansion. There's a little bridge that goes over the uh, flume for uh, Splash, Mountain. Splash Mountain. And it's not the main walkway, it's set back behind that. Yeah, so, I, I see the drop in the distance here. Yeah. And then, but look right, I look right below me, and there's logs coming out right from under the bridge. Yep, and uh, just to our right is the Mark Twain going by. That's the horn that we all just heard just a second ago. Really cool. 
It's an incredibly tranquil spot. The park is packed today. We're the only ones on this yeah, block. Yeah, no, this is great. Isn't and it's nice awesome? and cool right over here, And you here can too. smell the chlorine yeah, from you can Splash see Mountain. I love it, right? That's this, one of my favorite smells. It reminds oh, me of Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, all, all the water rides with Disney. Yeah, a little bit musty water Disney, with chlorine Disney Park it. water is the greatest freaking thing to smell, man. It just brings you back smell to your childhood. But don't drink it. Yeah, don't drink it. No, please, don't so. drink no it. No drinking. It's green. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to fill a uh, bottle with Splash Mountain water. And uh, we'll sell it to the highest bidder right yeah. here on the show today. <laughs> or, you, yeah, and then when you get it, you can open it up and just smell it. Like, you know, how they do in space balls with the cans of air <laughs> do with, the, with the water. If you walk forward just a little ways with me, there's something I want to show you up here. It's um, really cool. The other neat thing about this area is it's so heavily forested and plants and ferns and things. You yeah. feel like you're out in nature. Yeah. And then you take a few steps away and you're right back where all the people are. Yeah. Uh, but the people come down, they're dropping like literally right, right now under us. And then and they come, they come out. over here and you can see them flopping out right there. They are. You can hear us. them. And they're screaming and they're wet. And you see them. Oh, I love that. Oh, they're coming awesome. all the way around. And you see them, and they're all shaking Shaky, their hands, yeah, and, and they're going they're through. Wet. And then we go back to where the, yeah, the exit get to go back into the cave. Yeah. Isn't that great? I love it. Well, this is, this is absolutely one of my favorite rides anyway. I, I could ride Splash Mountain 20 times a day at Disneyland and feel like I'm completely satisfied. Of course, if I get 20 rides, that's a really good day, right? It is. Or a really cold day. Yeah, it could be. can really lament the fact that they're not building huge attractions like this at Disneyland anymore. Um, Splash Mountain is quite old now. It's 1989. About 1989. It was one of Tony Baxter's big, big attractions that he, that he uh, headed. Uh, and it was the one that he did really before uh, Indiana Jones, which I considered the very last of those big, big attractions for, for They Disneyland. did Indy, I think, for the 40th anniversary. Yeah, in 1995. Was it the 35th anniversary or the 40th? 40th. It's the 40th. So for the 40th anniversary, and we're coming up on the 60th anniversary next summer. So that's, and they haven't built a, built a major e-ticket at Disneyland in 20 years. 20 years. That's... That's a sad state of affairs. That is kind of sad. <laughs> but you know what the great thing is, is that we still have Splash Mountain today. We still have Indiana Jones today. We still have uh, Star Tours and, and now Thunder Mountain again with us. So we do have these great big attractions. But it would be nice to add one more giant weapon to the arsenal here. I think they always need to add something. For a long time, they tried to build a major e-ticket at least once every five years. Um, and something big to draw people back. And they haven't been doing that. Of course, California Adventure needs a lot of work yeah, and attention. Well, that's, so that's, and I'm that's sure that's where all the money went. Yeah, all the money's been going to California Adventure. And, you know, I, I think we can agree that it was worth it the second California Adventure, what they did in oh, 2.0. Yeah. yeah, all that, that money they spent for Cars Land and Buena Vista Street was definitely worth and, it. And really, uh, California Adventure is still the park that does need more help with. I mean, I know that uh, Disneyland's Tomorrowland is probably the one that suffers the most right now. But uh, at the same time, California Adventure is still not quite complete as, in, as far as a uh, complete day. You know, it has a lot to do throughout the day, but I feel like the... They get the, add just a little bit more, like right, another you know, biggie. The amount of rides that they have, so since they don't really have a big Pirates of the Caribbean or Haunted Mansion type thing, you know, I know they added Little Mermaid, but that's kind of more of a Fantasyland type uh, attraction with the, you know, with, but the, with the seashells and everything. Yeah. So I, they really do need a big... Another anchor somewhere, like in Hollywood Land or, or you know, Paradise Pier. Even I know, even, even though they have two, you know, great rides with Midway Mania and California Screaming, but uh, but it'd be nice to get that one more big, yeah, you know, wow. Yeah, I, I feel like you know, Bugs Land and Paradise Pier both have the rides that are mostly throwaways. Yeah, and and Hollywood Land is really short on attractions to begin with. Maybe, maybe the Hollywood backlight is the next thing. Oh, I, I, I think Paradise Pier is the messiest land for them. It doesn't feel like a Disney area to me. I'd love to see them do something a little more detailed and uh, more themed type attractions. That roller coaster, as much as everybody loves the roller coaster, it's just a big unthemed roller coaster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Disney parks shouldn't have attractions like that. Well, I, I believe that there is a theming to it. I yes. believe it's the Paradise Period. It is of the lunar parks back in the days. And it's supposed to reckon back to the 20s. It's supposed to be a Woody, yeah. but it's a steel coaster. But it's a steel coaster, so it's kind of hard to sell 
the idea of it being a giant wooded coaster when it's just a, an extremely smooth steel coaster with a loop. Well, yeah. don't don't forget the reason they picked that theme is because it was something cheap to build <laughs> and the same is true. Eisner had a budget for it that's right the same was true of Dino Land at Animal Kingdom and they needed they spent all their money they needed something cheaper to build so they built Dino Land that way they could just plunk carnival rides down and theme it to a roadside carnival but I think that's a cheap out of a theme and I'd love to see them use that land it's a massive amount of land and they could do something really spectacular I know they don't want to give up the lagoon because World of Color is a huge huge hit uh, but I think that one of these days we'll see them get ambitious and use that right. land for something. Really and I good. think part of part of the failure, or I mean, not really the failure, but some of the drawbacks of having a hotel bump up right against the theme park is that you don't have the land to build something the, the, big yeah, anymore. You can't right on that, in that area. on that border, you know, all of the Disneyland's greatest attractions exist outside the berm, yeah. and we just get in line inside the park, but they we ride actually, it. They on create the, outside. the berm. Yeah, that's what they do. Exactly, yeah. and none of nothing in California Adventure exists outside of that perimeter. Everything is inside, taking up space. Yeah. What a and, great uh, observation. Yeah. That is But maybe that's spot why on. Cars Land is so good and so magical. That, that, yeah, it's because they created that burn right. that they and needed. Midway Mania, granted, that, that does kind of go outside yeah. of the perimeter. And, and same with Radiator Springs Racers. That's, yeah. Yeah. And there's not a lot left to build on in California Adventure. There's a tiny bit of parking lot left uh, between Tower of Terror and Cars Land that is probably reserved for Cars Land expansion. And that's about it. There's a plot of land behind the Goofy Sky School, uh, between Goofy Sky School and the hotel. And Goofy Sky School is not a permanent attraction, folks. It's a carnival ride that sits on sand. So they can lift that up and remove it in a couple of days. Uh, that's how permanent it is. And yep. that's, a, that's a major construction um, you know, plot for the future. At one point they had talked about maybe doing a Ratatouille ride there. Uh, but it looks like, you know, with the, for the time being, uh, there are no major things planned. Uh, maybe Monsters, uh, Inc. might come back. We keep hearing that that project that we told you earlier was dead might possibly be resurrected, but we haven't heard that definitively yet. Fingers crossed. You want you want that one to happen or not? Because that's a really controversial project. The Monstropolis? Mon- yeah, the turning that back corner of DCA into Monsters land. I think when building a Monstropolis kind of thing, Monsters Inc. land, however they want to call it, I think it'd be fun and it might be a good way to finally get some sushi back into the resort. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> With Harry House. Great, yeah, great sushi but, restaurant. You, <laughs> you know, that's, that spot of land is really small, so I'm not sure how much they can do with that. And with that Fairfax market on, you know, bordering the Hollywood land, I'm not sure how involved that will be and if they're just going to have to knock it down and just open that old space up. but They uh, have more room than you think. They've got uh, the Muppets ride, Muppet the Vision. movie. They have the old um, millionaire show build, building that's right next to that. It's not really being used at all. Right. Then there's the Monsters, Inc. ride that would stay and probably get a light retheming. Then there's a big gap between the Monsters ride and the old Hollywood and Dine building. Uh-huh. And then there's the Hollywood and Dine building. Yeah. So there's actually quite a few really large parcels there. So there's room for two or three attractions sure. and a big restaurant, Harryhausen's. Yeah. So it could be really cool. And it mini lands be. seem to be the way Disney does things nowadays. All the new stuff that they've been building, uh, particularly in the overseas parks, right. are all mini lands. They right. built... Uh, that wonderful trackless ride at Hong Kong Disneyland, yeah, Mystic, Mystic Point, Manor, yeah, G- yep. Grizzly Gulch, and then you also had Toy Story. Doesn't and there are three there are teeny there. tiny little lands, each anchored by a big ride, except for Toy Story Land that's anchored by nothing. <laughs> <laughs> giant props. The giant weenie is Woody. Yes, it's kind of like or staying at the All Star Resort at Disney World. They built that as a land, mm-hmm. so that's you know they got that going for them. That's true. Yeah, so I think a mini land at DCA might actually work. Mini land, I think, would work. I'm well, let's betting. let's mosey on. Let's see what's up ahead. All right. So we've uh, moseyed back into the corner of the park. Literally, we're at the oh, dead wait, wait, end. Wait, 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 wait. Listen. Guess where we are. Where are we? We're we in Tomorrowland? Oh, no, no. I don't think so. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Obviously, we're uh, at a Country Bear Jamboree, right? Is that? We are at the Country Bear Jamboree. <laughs> we are also at Winnie the Pooh. 
Many Adventures of That's Winnie the Pooh. Right. Corner. The, it is many adventures, but really it's 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 more like uh, about four adventures. I think there's about three. Uh, well, there's three, and there's like an acid trip in the middle of it, is it? <laughs> they somehow managed to take an audio animatronic adventure with two theaters with 20 minutes and the nice cool air conditioning and turn it into a single dark ride that not even children enjoy. <laughs> I will say my kids, well, two of my three kids enjoy this ride. I think you have to be of a certain age. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah you do. Yeah, I no. think you have to be between four and a half and five. My three-year-old does actually <laughs> enjoy it. Uh, and my six-year-old, when he was six years old, really enjoyed it. I'll take him when he's seven, see how he fills in. But, um, yeah, the nine-year-old's I, like, eh, I want Splash Mountain. I feel like Winnie the Pooh ride is kind of like the prequels, the Star Wars prequels. If you're of a certain age that never seen the originals and you've done this, then it's okay. That's but good if, for the kids. But if you've done the original Fantasyland rides and then you go on this, then something's missing. Yeah. Well, think about that, because you go to Fantasyland and they all have long lines, all those rides. But you come here, and this is the one dark ride you can just walk right on. And it's pretty much been that way since the day they built it. Right. And this is the one version of the ride that I think is probably the most uh, inferior compared to the rest of the ones in the world, even even compared to Magic Kingdom. I like the one in Magic Kingdom. Yeah, I actually great. enjoy that ride. I think the order of the events that you see is much better. And, that, you know, the Tigger moment. Yeah, when is, they actually bounce the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, the this one, yeah. It just kind of wind one, rocks you. Yeah, you kind of get rock around. around. They're ride vehicles with a moderate amount of, of motion base to them. So in Florida, I think it has two different motions. They have the floody place motion where it kind of rocks, and then they have the ticker motion where it bounces. It bounces. And uh, here we have one motion. It's the floody place the, motion, the, the rocking. Wavy, yeah. And they start it almost as soon as you get into the ride, and it stays on throughout the entire ride, even after you pass the floody place. But during the honey part, that also makes sense, too. They could actually have some spinning <laughs> if they wanted to on that. I wish they would. That would make it a better ride. That'd be ride. very cool. Just put teacups on the ride track and do a Roger let Rabbit kids thing. Spin. Roger Rabbit always has a long line. Yeah, that's right. Because Roger Rabbit's a great it's a, dark it's a, ride. It's a great yeah, they dark took a dark ride. ride and gave it a little bit of thrill. Yeah, David, I think you've solved the <laughs> secret to Winnie the Pooh. I they think we to, all did. All three of us. They the, need the, to put teacups on this track. Yeah. All right, pots. Disney. Tea we're pots. giving you honey, honey pots. Honey pots. officially yeah. honey because I know that Disney legal. Uh, they're reluctant to use ideas that they think others can sue them for. So we're relinquishing all rights to this idea right here. Doug, do you relinquish? I relinquish. David, have you relinquished your rights? I relinquished. Well, I'm holding on the rights. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going to be this one's going to be mine. Disney's going to pay me for this. No, no, I relinquish all rights. There you go, folks. You can have your spinning right. <laughs> I, I, you know, I just didn't notice this until last time I was here. I, I looked at the Pooh Bear that was holding the balloon in the very beginning, and I looked at the Pooh Bear that was holding a piece of cake at the very end. They're the same figure. Same exact figure. <laughs> he's holding it. He's, you know, he's holding his right hand up, and then. Yeah, we'll go on it, watch it again next time you ride it, and uh, tell me if you don't think that those are the same exact figures. That is cheap. And then the, he eats the honey this, twice in the Heffalumps and Woozles Nightmare, and then at the when you come out of it, he's still eating the honey in the same figure. You know, there are a couple of cool things about this ride. Uh, one is there's a tribute to the country bears in there that's pretty cool. And remember the talking bus of, what was it, Larry Buck and Melvin? That Melvin? sounds right. And the, the heads that were above the doors as you exited the theater, and they would talk during the show, and they were funny. Well, their heads are still in the ride, and as you exit the Hufflumps and Woozles room, and you see Winnie the Pooh stuck in the honey, if you look straight up behind you as you enter the doorway, their heads are behind you. So you don't right. see them unless you turn oh, around no and look, way. and their heads are still up I, there. I did not know that. Yeah, it's one of it's an awesome tribute no, to them. Right. Actually, I think, uh, you know, I hate to disagree with you. I think it's an okay tribute, but it's a kind of a... It's one that you're not really paying them tribute. You're keeping it hidden. It's kind of an Easter egg rather than a real tribute. It's an Easter egg. Because uh, in Mr. Toad at uh, or Winnie the Pooh over in uh, Florida, you have Mr. Toad handing over Pooh the deed to uh, the, oh, the area. Oh, and that, yeah. I feel like that's a tribute. You know, you're nodding something that's uh, pre-existing. This one is just like, we'll just leave them hanging there. There are lots of little tributes to Mr. Toad. Also in Florida at Haunted Mansion, they put Mr. Toad in uh, his, his gra- vehicle in the graveyard. Yeah. So that's a kind of a nice trip. And we all know where he went. Yeah, straight to hell. Straight, straight to hell. hell. That's right. It's very warm there. And it's warm in the attraction above hell here at Disneyland, which is 
Alice in Wonderland because all the heat rises. Um, so there's another neat thing. We're standing right by where there's a waterfall and this waterfall was not built for Winnie the Pooh. The, the waterfall at the far end, just as you're exiting the show building in your vehicle, if you look, you'll see there's water running. And if you um, stand by the little fence, you'll see there's a really strangely hidden waterfall. Why would they have spent all that money to build this, this water feature? Well, it was there in the days of the Country Bear Jamboree. And this was a little area you could sit over here. And it was a nice spot to hang out. And those were the kind of little details that... Disney used to build in the park. So it's a wooded area with lots of ferns and a really beautiful little trickling waterfall. I love it. Great hidden gem. I didn't even know this was here. Uh, I, yeah. yeah, no, it feels good. It feels One nice. of my it favorite cool. little hideaway spots. And the water runs all the way underneath the walkway where we are here and then re-emerges over by the attraction. So in the queue, you see there's a little stream running through and it's all fed by this waterfall. Oh, nice. It's Pooh Splash Mountain. It is. Hey, well, uh, Pooh Splash Hill. We are also right over here by the exit of Splash Mountain, Winnie the Pooh's in a dead end area. And I've often thought since I was young that it was strange that this was like a cul-de-sac in the park because everything else was pretty free flowing through the park right up until they built uh, Mickey's Toontown. And that's also a dead end. But would it be possible to connect this area backstage all the way through to Big Thunder Trail or perhaps even go as far as yes. Toontown? You know, I when I was a kid and I, I did a lot of armchair imagineering while watching the Disney afternoon and when Critter Country opened I always thought it'd be great to get the Gummy Bears quick cars, the, their, their mode of transportation from the woods to the medieval area and that's yeah. Fantasyland. So, you know, if you built a quick cars ride through Gummy Glen from Critter Country to Fantasyland even and vice versa that could be a good way to get people through the area without having them to backtrack there's actually quite a bit of space back there and Disney now uh, owns and rents a lot of property outside of the resort that's a short drive so backstage here from where we are you find the the parade uh, buildings where they store the floats that's right behind where we are you go a little further and that's where the stables are at Circle D Ranch and where they now shoot off the fireworks is right next to the horses which is why the horses don't stay there overnight they take them away in the evenings and then just a little further than that is the roundhouse and then way set back from it all is uh, Team Disney Anaheim so there's a tremendous number of backstage buildings a lot of which can be removed and a lot of that storage moved off-site. So they still need room to store the parade floats, but they can kind of be pushed off to the side. So technically, they could, if they wanted, to build a small amount of land and even an attraction or two and connect a walkway up behind where the Indian Village is now. So go underneath the berm, and I think they could connect up. And I do think that if this wasn't a cul-de-sac, it would improve the traffic flow in the park. Not just uh, this area, but also if they could do it with Toontown. It kind of has always bothered me about Toontown, too. And, and so that's, that's the one good thing about Bugs Land, that they finally did open it up into Hollywood Land. Yeah, they did. It made a big difference yeah, a to the traffic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bugs Land used to be kind of a, a dead spot in the park, but once they opened it up to Tower of Terror, it improved the traffic of both of those attractions. Right. Yeah. Remember, Tower was a big deal. It was a major e-ticket attraction. When they opened it, it was not uh, very busy. And it would frequently have five to ten minute waits, even on you know moderately busy it days. It was a very hard ride to get to, though. I mean, it yep. was out of the way. Well, people would see it and not know how to get there. And now they can connect either through Hollywood Land or through Bugs Land. Yeah. So it gets more traffic. So I do think maybe Disneyland could benefit from doing something similar. No. It looks like our recorder, we're doing this grand tour of Disneyland, and it looks like our recorder is running out it of is. juice. We're running out of juice. I have to apologize to all the mice So we're going to do something magical uh, here at Mice Chat, as we like to do from time to time. And uh, we do with our hands, we go, diddly doo, diddly doo, diddly doo, diddly doo. And when we do that, it transports us from one place to another place, which would be Mice Chat Studios, which is uh, moving to Burbank, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we are building an enormous studio right now for Mice Chat in uh, Burbank, very near the Disney Studios, uh, Warner Brothers, and just down the road from Universal. 
and we're going to be able to do a lot of our recording videos, uh, programs from the new Mice Chat studios. We're going to see the Mice Chat sign up high amongst all of them, right? We're, we hope to get zoning from the city to have the highest placed sign in the entire city, that, that which would, would be appropriate. Yeah, that would so, be. Yeah. Uh, something for you all to look forward to. So I think we're going to leave this magic place, and if we all just wish as hard as we can, I want to go home, I want to go home. do 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 Oh, I think I think we're here. We're in the Mice Chat studio. Did we all make it? Okay, Doug, are you there? I'm here. I'm here in the studio. David, David did you transport? Uh, yeah, I think I think I left my shoe though. But uh, oh. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> it's, you know what? It's always good to have one shoe because then people always ask you that question over and over again. You know when you're <laughs> driving down the freeway and you see that one shoe at the side of the road? Yeah. yeah. Don't you ever wonder what happened? No, I never. Oh. No, I actually just think that uh, somebody lost a shoe. <laughs> what do they do with losing a shoe on the freeway? <laughs> and what about those shoes that are hanging from the power lines? Oh, well, that's something else entirely. Okay, I won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> we get on shoes. David lost a shoe. Sorry. Well, I hope that. It's my fault. <laughs> I hope there are no tacks that we left on the floor because, you know, this is the new Mice Chat studio and it's still being Imagineered a little bit. Um, the Imagineers have been working on it around the clock for about five years and they should be just about done with it. I mean, the studio is pretty much ready to rock and roll. This is our first broadcast from the new studios. Um, and I think I'm really proud of it. There's a lot of AstroTurf. And fake flowers and little hillsides. It really and is amazing. Dwarves and yeah. things. It's really awesome. And hopefully we'll be able to post some pictures for y'all soon of our awesome new studios uh, here at the Mice Chat podcast. And also for our Mice Pod members, they'll be able to use the resources of this studio as well. It's pretty cool, isn't it, guys? Very cool. I'm amazed. Uh, and I'm really excited to see how the lighting package looks at night uh, on the new studios. But I've been <laughs> promised that it's really good, that the LEDs, they burn bright and colorful, and they don't use a lot of power. So we'll have to get you all more information on that very soon. But let's pick up where we left off. I mean, this has been a really fun show um, so far. We've toured through the parks, but we've got almost an entire podcast worth of information already. And we only covered a tiny sliver of the park. It was like our listeners are just walking through the park with us, which is what we were doing, walking through the park and just seeing what caught our fancy and, and talking about it. And it's a different sort of show for us, but I really enjoyed it. What about you guys? It was really fun. I have, I have to agree with you there, Dusty Sage that uh, and Doug. It was, I mean, it's there's something special about actually being there and having things come to your mind while you're there. It's, uh, I mean, I'm kind of repeating myself and... It's uh, it's always just fun to be there. And you know what's really great about it, too, is getting a chance to uh, see all the Mice Chat readers and uh, Mice uh, Chat podcast listeners there. And, uh, you know, it's really cool just walking the park and all of a sudden they see us recording. They know that this is Mice Chat. You know, really, really cool stuff. Yeah, it was it was nice to be able to get some of them on the show. I mean, these folks that support us every single day, we post the content and we've got the podcasts coming out from the Mice Pod. We're posting one almost every single day now. And these folks are the ones that are supporting us and making all that possible. And so great to be able to get them on the show. So we'll have to plan on doing a follow-up real soon. Uh, we still haven't touched... Uh, any of Fantasyland or Tomorrowland or Main Street USA or Adventureland. Uh, there's a lot for us still to cover in the park. And then you can always head over to California Adventure and get a drink and see what we sound like uh, drunk. <laughs> now, like so they always try that. Someday. Yeah, like they always say, tip of the Matterhorn. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Um, okay, so I, I'd like to circle back on something that we were talking about uh, earlier, and we were over at Splash Mountain and uh, talking about attractions and things, and it had popped into my head about the article that David just wrote for Mice Chat about the number of attractions at the Disneyland Resort versus the Walt Disney World Resort, and the premise of that article is the Walt Disney Resort has four theme parks. So obviously, it must have more rides than the Disneyland Resort. And David took a look at that. And David, what did you find? Uh, well, I, I do want to clarify you. It's not just the attractions I'm looking at. It's I am really going into the nitty gritty and just kind of going off of what how many rides they ha they have versus how many rides Disneyland has. And that's two parks to four. 
And it, I was pretty amazed with what I came up with. And, and this is off, only going off of official websites and maps and stuff like that. I'm not making anything up. And this is just a kind of accounting exercise. And I did it like a number of times just to make sure the numbers were correct. And I was pretty, pretty amazed. Well, what did you find? Well, <laughs> you know, well, first, let me ask you, Dusty Sage, how many rides uh, do you think Walt Disney World should have more rides in Disneyland? Well, it should because each one of the parks, <clears> I'd <throat> say the Magic Kingdom should have about as many attractions as Disneyland. And California Adventure should have about as many. Uh, I'll, I'm going to switch that to rides because you weren't counting attractions. Correct. Uh, and le- well, let me find out from you what would be considered an attraction that you didn't kind you didn't count would that be like meet and greets or the yeah, movie attractions what about like exactly. tough to be a bug is that an is that a mm-hmm. ride or an attraction that's an attraction anything so an where attraction. you just anything where you just sit and stay and sit in a theater that is an attraction and that that includes walkthroughs exhibits art galleries showcases circle visions and you know, I, I, re- I this was kind of a hard one. And Carousel of Progress, I counted that as a ride because for it uh, because it does move. It does. It is a carousel. It's like a merry-go-round that you just go very slowly, and you you are seeing a show during it. But you know, it's kind of like a Spaceship Earth kind of thing, but just a different ride format. So you really kind of threw a bone to Walt Disney World and counted that. Yes. Um, so I'm going to guess. That Magic Kingdom would be very similar to Disneyland in the number of rides. Okay. Um, Epcot and DCA should be very similar in the number of, of rides. Uh, and since the Animal Kingdom Park and the studios are the two newer parks and, and smaller uh, in the ride category, I'd say that the two of them combined is probably about the same as an Epcot. So – I would give Walt Disney World the edge because they have four parks. Come on, okay. Disney World. You got to you got to pull through four parks. You are you are always out there telling folks that it's the biggest and the best resort in the entire world. So prove me right. <laughs> and uh, I w- I would like to know exactly what uh, Doug is thinking too. I what I can say is that uh, I know that Disneyland definitely has more rides than Magic Kingdom because after walking through Magic Kingdom, I keep on thinking, man, Disneyland must have more rides. So I, I'm going to give the edge to Disneyland there. I also think that uh, that <clears throat> California Adventure has more rides than uh, the Disney Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom. But with Epcot, there's a lot of rides over at Epcot. So uh, I would also give the edge to Disney World. I think that Disney World has more, more rides slightly, but I think that with the two parks over at the Disneyland Resort, it's very close. But, but Doug, Disneyland is tiny compared to the Magic Kingdom. I mean, the Magic Kingdom with all that space, surely they have more rides. Yeah, but you know, I, I think about this is that Disneyland has so many rides that they take up underground, you know, they, they kind of stack on top of each other without knowing. And you could just see that there's ride after ride after ride where Disney World feels a little bit more spaced out. But, uh, all the four parks together, I, I do believe that Disney World probably has the edge, uh, for having more rides. Well, let's find out. We have an expert on the line with us. Well, Magic Kingdom has 27 rides total and uh, i mean this is uh and i'm what i'm doing here is i'm also grouping the railroad into one ride and i'm separating out the main street vehicles into each individual ride as well since on their maps they kind of just say main street vehicles and that counts as one and i didn't think that was fair so i i separated the horse-drawn streetcar the jitney the fire engine the omnibus that gets an additional order so that's one two three four five that's about four rides right there. And um, so 27 total for Magic Kingdom. Is that as high as, as you thought it would be? Or is that, uh, hmm. is that about I'm right? I'm thinking that's really low. How many yeah. are at Disneyland? Disneyland has 36 total rides. And I'm doing the same for them. Disneyland Railroad is one. And the Main Street vehicles are their own thing. And I so, think there's about the same number of Main Street vehicles in both Disneyland and Disney World, so it's probably yes. a wash. Yes. Um, some people may think there's more at Disneyland, and that's because they run them more often at Disneyland. But I think Disney World has just as many. 
So what about the other parks? I'm wondering how California Adventure compares because if we're saying that Disney World has fewer or more attractions, then California Adventure has to pick up a lot of slack here. They'd have to pick up almost as many attractions as Epcot Animal Kingdom and MGM Studios or whatever they call it now combined because Disneyland has about what? About 10 more rides than Magic Kingdom? Well, I guess I haven't done the overall yet. Uh, Walt Disney World Total has about 50 attractions. 49 right now because the Snow White, the Seven Dwarfs Mine Car isn't officially open. But once that gets going, it'll be 50. The Disneyland Resort Total has 57. So it is off by seven, but that's still two parts that has more rides than Walt Disney World as a whole. And if you're looking at Epcot, Epcot has 10 rides, and uh, Disney Hollywood Studios has six, and Animal Kingdom has seven. And how many does uh, does DCA have? California Adventure has a total of 21. Oh, wow. But you have to factor in, to be fair, Paradise Pier and uh, the, a Bugs Land does have a few throwaway ride. So if you but you know, if you really add those up, the throwaway rides, maybe it's like five of them. That still says Disneyland has fifty seven well, to fifty. You know, they have still, Dino Dino Land at <laughs> Animal Kingdom and sure. uh, I don't know, you probably don't count the Honey I Shrunk the Kids playground as an as a ride. Oh, right. Um, right. But it's very interesting. So the Disneyland Resort relies heavily on rides, and the Disney World Resort must rely very heavily on attractions. So they're doing more yeah. filler at Disney World, more walkthroughs right. more and shows, movies. More... and Yep. Exactly. So and, I guess uh, what, it kind of are... boils down to what people really want out of their vacation. I mean, if you're seeking something that keeps you moving and a little bit thrilling, then Disneyland Resort's probably the place to go. But if you're just looking for uh, a totality of attractions in general, then Disney World is probably your place to go for just the parks. Because we're not talking about right. all the other amazing things that Disney World has, the all the hotels sure. and restaurants and the huge downtown Disney and the golf courses and the water parks. And I mean, there's more at Disney World, folks. We're not trying to to bash any of the resorts. But if you just compare them rides to rides, the Disneyland Resort with only two parks has more rides than all four parks at Walt Disney World. And that, to me, okay. is shocking. I really, really was surprised by your article. Yeah, and if people want to look for it and read on more in more depth than they can, it's on uh, my chat website, and they could, you know, scroll through that. And I also made sure to like star everything that's unique to Walt Disney World rides wise. So there's 23 rides that are unique to Walt Disney World, but there are 30 rides that are unique to Disneyland. So there's still, you know, that's that's still a, a there's a lot more at Disneyland ride wise. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised why Florida, the, the management in Florida doesn't try to put more in there because I certainly would make more trips to Walt Disney world if they treated it more like Disneyland. But then you also look at universal Orlando and they don't really have that many rides either. It's so it, it might just be, uh, kind of the way they think, do things over there. But uh, I, I was kind of a little bit disappointed with uh, the amount of rides. Yeah, I think in Florida, they kind of made a decision years ago that they were going to go after the number of parks so that they could get you to add a day for each park instead of adding more rides and attractions to any one park, which even if you didn't experience them all, you might say, well, we did that park and then not go back for another day. So it's right. it's kind of a brilliant strategy, but a little bit disappointing to hear that four parks has fewer rides than two parks. Doug, were you right. surprised by that? Uh, I'm shocked. I'm shocked by it. I, I will say that I, I, I guess I can understand that because, you know, we are looking California Adventure. They have shoved a lot of you know, smaller rides into that park and everything. So I can see that. But the one thing that I've always thought that Walt Disney World has, it's just, you know, you have those four parks, you know, and they're all four completely different environments. Uh, Of course, at this point now, I kind of ignore Disney Hollywood Studios until they do something. Disney, do something to Disney Hollywood Studios, please. 
Please. Add, add, that, add something. That park needs a California Adventure-sized budget yeah. to completely redo it. Remember when California right. Adventure opened and it was a big flop and they spent you know more money than they originally spent to build the park to rebuild yeah. pieces of the park to make it better? The Studios Park in Florida needs that desperately. It is a broken park. Yeah, it is. And there are sections that are very nice they can keep. They can keep the whole entry street that you walk in that walks straight down to the Chinese theater, even though it's hidden by that hideous hat. And they've got the wonderful Sunset Boulevard that leads down to Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror. Yeah, my and favorite part. Kind of a neat lagoon um, off to your left with that dinosaur in the lagoon. And there's some neat restaurants. And then the big, ugly Indiana Jones Theater – and the rest is just kind of a lost cause, yeah. um, you know, all the way around. I had a question. Is the Studio Backlot Tour still operating at the Disney Hollywood Studios? Sadly, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a pathetic uh, shell of an action. Right, God. I, I was told from a few people that it's not running anymore, but I just wanted to make sure because if it's not, then we're going to have to bump Disney Hollywood Studios down to five rides. But it you is, can keep it at six for now. It's as far as I know, it's still running. Uh, it shouldn't be because there's not a lot of there there. Um, they've been carving right. away at the studio tour. They took up a, a big piece of it, the back lot section, uh, for what's that car stunt ride thing called? The lights motor action. Yep. Which also is kind of a pathetic a- attraction, but. Um, so that whole back part of the park is, is a lost cause, but there's one reason they keep the studio tour running, and that's Catastrophe Canyon. And that's mm-hmm. Disney World's response to Universal Studios, uh, because Universal Studios opened with a studio tour in Florida. Well, Universal got rid of their studio tour because it's not really an active movie house place like Universal Studios in Hollywood. Yes, they do some um, production on the sound stages, et cetera, but they didn't have a massive back lot and all those things where productions were going on to justify it. And they didn't have all of those little attractions that you ride through like they do at Universal Hollywood. So very quickly, they gave up on their studio tour at Universal in Orlando uh, to focus on attractions and rides in the park. But at the Disney MGM studios, they kept their studio tour going. And over the years, it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. I think that the big gimmick when you get in the the queue is Pearl Harbor. Remember that movie, Pearl Harbor, that Disney did that kind of bombed? You know, they spent a gajillion dollars on it. I've been trying to forget it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you probably are going to need therapy now that I brought it back up. But uh, they have some little tiny miniatures in a tank and they blow them up and then you go someplace else and they have the cabin of the ship and they get somebody from the audience to go in the ship and they put a poncho on them and dump water on them. And all of this is before you ever get on the tram because once you're on the tram, it's over pretty quick. So sadly, yes, David, the studio tour is still operational. I will say one other thing that's shocking about this. You're talking about that there's that many more rides over at the Disneyland Resort uh, compared to Walt Disney World. And, you, you know, we're talking about Epcot, and obviously we all love Epcot. Epcot's amazing. But you do know that the same distance between, you have the distance between California Screaming to the entrance of Small World in Disneyland is the exact same distance in Epcot uh, that is uh, the American Pavilion to the entrance of uh, Spaceship Earth. Wow. All of Disneyland fits just inside of the lagoon in World Showcase. So think about that. That park is massive. And Disneyland has all those rides and all of Epcot has 10. So it's really unconscionable that around World Showcase there, they haven't managed to build any rides. I mean, they've got Maelstrom and the little um, boat ride in Mexico. And I think those are the only rides... Everything else is movies. Soren is yeah. in Future World. So, yeah, that's the land. It. For, yeah. for all of uh, the world showcase there, they only managed to build two rides. Um, American Adventure doesn't count because that's a show, and all the rest are movies. And I'd really love to see them build some attractions there. 
you know, Mount Fuji in Japan or something. There's yeah. some real opportunity. So, David, I got to give you some mad props, man. That was an incredible article. It, you shocked me. And although I think I've always kind of known that Disneyland does have more rides than any other Disney theme park, I am absolutely blown away that the two parks at the Disneyland Resort have more rides than all of Walt Disney World. So that's really cool. And we look forward to hearing what our audience has to say about that. So make sure that you uh, write to us at podcast at micechat.com and let us know what you think about that. Are rides important to you or attractions important? What do you think about the ride count at the two resorts? Did it shock you uh, like it did us? And I've got another little, I'm going to do a little tie-in here uh, because we're getting ready to do our gumball rally at Disneyland. And when you think about how many rides there are at Disneyland, we do an event that has you in one day ride as many attractions as you can at the Disneyland Resort. The uh, game is just inside of Disneyland Park. So one park, one day, how many rides can you ride? And guys, do you think that it's possible to ride all of the attractions at Disneyland in a single day? If it's a Saturday, no. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, the answer is a qualified yes. And I say that because the first two years of the Gumball Rally, we did have multiple teams all complete the Gumball Rally in a single day. Um, so all of the attractions that were available that day, they were able to, to finish. So we know that it's possible. But a couple of things have changed since then. One, the parks have become much more crowded. And two, they've changed the way that FastPass works. You used to be able to collect fast passes all day long and then use them at any time you wanted. And now you're uh, not able to do that anymore. You have to use the fast pass during the window that they give you, and it's one hour window. So if you're doing the gumball rally, that makes planning very, very difficult. So I don't think that it's possible to complete all the attractions at Disneyland in a single day anymore. Um, you could probably get pretty close, but uh, I don't think that it's, it's really possible. Uh, this year, it's maybe a little easier because so many attractions are under refurbishment and Pirates of the Caribbean will be closed and Alice is closed and the subs are closed. So there's a lot of attractions that have long lines normally that will be closed for a gumball rally. And that's going to chop hours off of the waiting and ride time for these teams. So it'll be very interesting. And if you would like to play in the Gumball Rally, it's on May the 3rd at the Disneyland Resort, and you can find all the information about it at micechat.com slash rally. And we hope that you will join us. There's only about 10 spots left open for the event. Uh, we have 500 people that can participate uh, as we're maxed out by the venues that we use. We start the event at the ESPN zone in downtown Disney. We end it at the Howard Johnson's Anaheim Resort just across the street from the Matterhorn. And they kind of max out at about 500 people. So that's the maximum number of people who can play. But it is absolutely amazing. And don't miss out. MiceChat.com slash rally. And I hope that both David and Doug, that you all will be able to join us for the rally this year. Uh, I have a feeling that with all your mad skills on theme parks and when to go to what places, that you'd have a really good shot of winning. And then again, you might lose to a 10-year-old. <laughs> That's what <laughs> two, I'm going to do. Two years ago, um, a guy from San Diego and his daughter, who was about, I think she was 13 or 14 at the time, um, he's middle-aged, you know, she's a teenager. They competed as a team of two, and they won the whole thing. And at the end of the event, I asked them, so what's the secret to riding you know, as many attractions as you can in one day? And he said, don't stop to use the bathroom and don't eat. Wow. So that's dedication. I would recommend bringing something to eat in your backpack, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and bring a bottle of water with you and just keep the bathroom breaks to a minimum. Make it something on the way. Yeah. No pooping. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do, do that on the 24 hour day. I'm not going to go with that. <laughs> yeah. Good, Try good, it. Good, 24 hour day. <laughs> yeah. Those are good so luck. insane. Um, but we're going to start wrapping things up here as we have a lot of stuff to tell you all. And most importantly, we want to hear from you. So if you'd like to leave us a message, um, you can do so on micechat.com uh, where we've posted this podcast. 
or you can write us at podcast at micechat.com or you can call us. And if you call and you leave a really good question for us, we may play your question right here on the show. So you can call 609-935-2147. Again, that's 609-935-2147. And leave us a message, uh, and we would love to hear your voice. So, Doug, there's a lot of ways that our listeners can uh, interact with us. We just wish that they would do it more often. Absolutely. And if you guys, you, you got to join us because you guys have been listening this whole time and you've been hearing all these multi-tones of voices going on, ups and downs. Hey, that's podcast magic. You should be a part of that. That's right. Um, and all it costs you is the low, low fee of nothing. We provide these shows to you for free <laughs> because we love doing it. Uh, so every time you listen, you save a fairy. And I, I really mean Tinkerbell and not Fishbulb. So uh, and anyway, you can also reach us on Facebook at facebook.com slash mice book or on Twitter at twitter.com slash mice chat. And of course, you can always find us at micechat.com or the podcasts, all of our shows at micepod.com. But Doug, you've got a really stellar podcast of your own that's on the Mice Pod. And why don't you give us a plug on what's the latest on the season pass? Yeah, I totally actually forgot to plug the season pass. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Well, yeah. you're welcome. The season pass podcast over at seasonpasspodcast.com is a part of the Mice Pod over at micechat.com. And we have articles up all the time from the podcast. And the latest one is uh, our trip over to uh, the Kennedy Space Center to check out Atlantis with uh, the project manager and director of that ride, uh, Emily Howard from PJV. We also have uh, some other great interviews coming up, including Marty Sklar, some more Tony Baxter's uh, headed our way. We have a lot of stuff coming uh, over at the season pass. Wait a minute. Did you just say that the Ken Kennedy Space Center has an attraction called Atlantis? Yeah, well, they kind of call it an exhibit, but it's an attraction. Is it used like a motion simulator or something? No, it, it's it, well, it's a film, but it's a it's a multi sensory film. It's very very cool. How okay, that's it. cool because we go to Florida all the time, and a million times I've wanted to visit the Kennedy Space Center, but since the shuttles aren't blasting off anymore, I thought nah. But now I'm going to go. That well, sounds really really cool. So it, I'll listen to your podcast and then I'll make a decision. Yeah, because it's the actual Atlantis shuttle is there, and you are right there up close to it. It is phenomenal what they did with it. That is awesome. And we have two other big, gigantic events coming up that we want everyone to know about. The first is that at the end of October, uh, I think it's, it starts October 22nd, we're doing a huge Mice Chat invasion of Walt Disney World. This year, we're actually going to start it at the Universal Resort since they're opening the new Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley. And they have the new Gringotts ride and the Hogwarts Express and new restaurants and shops and all this cool stuff. We are going to stay uh, one or two nights at the Universal Orlando Resort because when you stay at their hotels, you get front of line passes and early entry. Huh? Smart, right? So we're going to do that. Then we're going to do Halloween Horror Nights there at Universal. And then we move over to the Disney World Resort where we're going to have a sip and nibble around the World Showcase for Food and Wine Festival. That is one of the favorite Mice Chat events every single year. Um, that's headed up by uh, Rick Wright. Um, and he is just incredible, longtime mice chatter. He also is the one who edits the weekend update, and he hosts the Sip and Nibble. We love that. We spend an entire day eating and drinking at every single booth all the way around World Showcase. Then the next day, wait for it, we are doing a gumball rally at the Disney World Resort. And what I can tell you is the theme is the monorail. There will only be two parks, and I'll let you figure out what those two are. The monorail, folks. It's not that hard. Uh, but one day, two parks, uh, Disney World Gumball Rally. People have been asking us for years. We did one about four or five years ago. It was very popular, uh, but we haven't been back to do one since, and this year we're going to do it. Then we also are going to, uh, those of you who book through Fairy Godmother Travel, my Chet's official, official travel partner, not only will she make sure that you're in a room near where all the other My Chatters are, she is going to comp you in to La Nuba, which is the Cirque du Soleil show in downtown Disney. And I've never seen that show. I hear it's great, and that's a one wonderful perk for everyone who's booking through Fairy Godmother Travel. So fairygodmothertravel.com or you can email her at micechat at fairygodmothertravel.com. 
Facebook.com. We'll also be having meet and greets, meals. Uh, we're doing all sorts of um, you know park adventures and tours and things during this week-long Mice Chat invasion of Walt Disney World and the Universal Orlando Resort. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? It sounds fantastic. It's going to be magical. We've been doing these uh, Walt Disney World invasions about every other year for almost 10 years. So we really have this wired. It's a lot of fun. And even if you're a single traveling alone, folks, come do this trip. Because with all the folks who will be there, some days there might be you know 80 to 100 people who show up for Gumball Rally. There'll be hundreds and hundreds. Um, so you'll always have somebody that you can hang out with, uh, especially the day that we do that long tour of World Showcase for the Sip and Nibble. And, you know, you just take some time, you meet people, we, we stand around eating and drinking. It's very social. It's a great way to meet people. So come do that with us. And that's not all. In June of next year, which is 2015, we're doing a Mice Chat cruise on the Disney Wonder to Alaska. And it starts June 1st, and we'll be traveling all the way up from Vancouver up the coast to Alaska. Um, It's whale migrating season. We're going to have lots of excursions. It's a seven-night cruise. Amazing. This cruise, we barely just mentioned it. I think we mentioned it on Facebook and word of mouth, and we've already booked dozens of staterooms on the ship. Uh, We're just now starting to publicize it, so now is the best time for you to sign up because prices are still really, really cheap. And if you think they're going to be cheap closer to the, the cruise, think again. The prices change rapidly. As the ship starts to fill, Disney starts to raise the prices. This coming June, we're going to the Mediterranean, and with Bob Gurr and the Mice Chatters for week-long adventure, followed by a trip to Disneyland Paris. And while we'd love for you to join us, and there are still cabins available, Disney has raised the prices so high that it's just not reasonable anymore. So those of us who booked early a year ago, we all got great deals. It was from $1,500 per person. That's a great, great deal. Uh, But the prices have risen and now there are thousands of dollars per person, um, which makes it crazy. But the Alaska trip is still affordable. I think she said it was from about $1,300 per person for an inside stateroom uh, to Alaska with the Mice Chatters. We'd love for you to join us again. Mice Chat at fairygodmothertravel.com is where you can email for more information about either one of those two great trips coming up, the Florida Invasion or the cruise to Alaska. So, guys, David, do you have anything that you'd like to um, to promote here at the end of the show? No, actually not not right now. I just have that article that you guys have, and hopefully I'll write some more in the future. Well, I'm counting on it. You are an amazing writer. I really loved your take on that story. It wasn't mean in any way. You weren't trying to uh, prove you know, an agenda to make Disney World look bad. You just presented the facts, and it was so interesting. We really look forward to more from you soon, David. It was a lot of fun. And most thank importantly, you. thank you so much for being on our podcast. I know this was a really long day for you. We walked all over the parks from opening all the way until our battery ran out and then we teleported here to the studio and now it's getting late but you guys, both of you are incredible. It is so much fun to do a show with you and I can't wait for the next one. So Doug, thank you. David, thank you. All of you out there in Mice Chat Land, a million thanks for listening every month. We'll be back again with you real soon. 